I prayed for years for God to save my husband, which is a good prayer, but it lacks substance. God can save whomever he pleases. It's not the eloquence of our prayers that does the saving. He alone does that. But I would argue that our prayers are for us to help us see him working in our lives and through our prayers. It builds our trust and our faith in him. So let's look at the Bible at some prayers we could be praying for our spouses. Number one, Lord, grant him repentance. The first command from Jesus in the Bible was in the book of Mark and it was, repent and believe the gospel. All Christians throughout history have repented and trusted in Jesus. That is the true mark of Christian life, repentance and trust. The Bible is clear that repentance is of the Lord. In 2 Timothy 2.25, it says, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. And then again, in Acts 11.18, it says, then to the Gentiles, also God has granted repentance that leads to life. So God clearly is the one who grants repentance. Number two, God, give them ears to hear. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He is always referring to spiritual discernment, not necessarily just hearing words that people are saying. We want our spouses to hear truth and discern with their mind, their spiritual mind, that this is true. Jesus gave a parable in John chapter 10 about his sheep hears his voice. He is not speaking of his audible voice. He's speaking of his voice of truth. Number three is similar to number two, and that is God, give them eyes to see. Again, this is spiritual eyes we're talking about. We want them to see truth as it is. The Bible is the best explanation of the way things are. It is reality. So we want them to be able to spiritually discern reality and truth as disclosed and revealed in the Bible. Proverbs 20:12 says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. So Lord, we want our spouses to have ears that hear and eyes that see. Number four, Jesus, soften their hearts. Throughout the book of Exodus, we see that Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And yes, God hardened his heart in some of those instances. But that's the point. God can do that. God can soften a person's heart and he can harden a person's heart. The Bible in Ezekiel 36, 26 says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone, a hard heart, from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, a soft heart. God does this. God is the one who softens a person's heart. I believe he uses different modes to do this, and we can talk about that in a later video. If you would like, please comment below. In Mark 4, he talks about the, the parable of the sower, which I call the parable of the soils, and I think a lot of other people have adopted that as well. But he says in Mark 4, 8, that other seeds, which is the word, fell into good soil, good soil, that's soft soil. If you think about gardening, you need soft soil and produced grain growing up and increasing and yielding 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold. We want them to have a soft heart. We want them to feel the conviction of sin, to feel God's presence, to understand. Which leads to number five, which is Holy Spirit, convict him of sin and righteousness. This is a hard one because we don't want to see our loved ones suffer, but we want them to feel the sinfulness of sin and be convicted. The Bible says in Psalm 34 that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. We want them to feel the weight of their sin, to lead them to repentance. That is the goodness of God. I have more, but I think I've talked enough and my voice is going, but if you want to hear more, leave a comment and I'll do a part two.